So after taking a look at the cash flow statement, the important part that we need to discuss is the operating activities. Now, what we discussed earlier was that for operating activities, we need to find the sales receipt, purchases, payment, the operating expenses payment, right? Which was called the direct method. But accountants have developed something called an indirect method. So the indirect method is, is basically based on the income statement that you have already prepared and to adjust that income statement based on accrual accounting. So we just discussed how accrual accounting includes non cash items as well. It includes items that would not be included if we just look at the cash accounting basis. So under the indirect method, which is an easier way to apply, what we'll do is we'll take the profit from operations figure, which comes from the income statement. And we'll adjust this figure for all non cash items or those items that have to be removed to find cash flow from operations, right? So we'll just adjust this figure. Okay. Now, how should we adjust this figure? What we'll start off with is first, we need to remove all the non cash expenses by non cash. I mean, we need to remove depreciation. Why are we adding it? We'll just take a look at that, but we need to remove non cash items like depreciation, loss on sale, gain or sale. Why are losses and gain non cash as well? Because when you're calculating loss or gain, you are calculating or comparing the selling price of that asset with the net book value. Now net book value is an accounting value, something that you have developed. It has nothing to do with actual cash value. It's a loss that you are realizing because the book value is different from the market value. So we need to adjust these non cash expenses as well changes in inventory, trade and other receivables or payable, basically your working capital. So any changes in your working capital need to be adjusted as well. There will be certain items that are included in the income statement, which do not necessarily mean that cash has been received. For example, sales, purchases, right? The cash spent on inventory has to be accounted for. We also need to subtract interest paid and corporate tax paid because that is also a cash outflow to arrive at profit from operations. So under the indirect method, we will use the basic idea that the income statement has been prepared. We know our profit from operations. We'll just adjust that profit to find our cash flow from operations. I'll discuss all these adjustments in this video, right? Okay. Now the first thing we should take a look at our income statement first. Right. So a simple income statement should look like this, right? So you have your revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, then you subtract your operating expenses. Remember all these expenses are subtracted. And after you subtract that you calculate your operating profit. Now under the indirect method, you will start with this figure, which is your operating profit figure. Now you have to remove all the non cash items that are included in this half. Right. So now, now what are the non cash items? Number one, the first non cash item is depreciation. That's a non cash expense because you're not paying for depreciation It's just an accounting expense you're recording in your books. Now this expense is being subtracted. So if you want to remove this expense, what should you do? You should add this. So this expense should be added to your operating profit, which is essentially the same thing as saying removing an expense. If you remove your expense, your operating profit figure should increase, right? Then you need to adjust all gains and losses as well, which will be included in general and admin expenses over here. So again, if there's a loss, it should be added since it's an expense, but if it's a gain, it should be subtracted because a gain will be added to this operating profit figure. So let's just start off with this statement first. So we will draw a separate statement under the indirect method where we will start off with this figure. That's your operating profit figure. We will add back the depreciation. That's a non cash expense to be removed. It will be added profit because it's a gain. It was added to your operating profit has to be removed. So it should be subtracted and loss again was an expense. It needs to be added. So just remember this rule. Any non cash expense that was included, just add that back because your profit figure will increase and any non cash income, just subtract that from your profit. So the first three adjustments that we should do to our operating profit figure to find the cash figure is depreciation and your profits and losses over here, right? Okay. Now, before I explain the other adjustments, one important note, 
for depreciation at times you might have the depreciation figure available so it'll be very easy we'll just add it sometimes you will will be required to calculate the depreciation so a quick recap how should you calculate your depreciation so you might be required to draw the provision for depreciation account something that we learned earlier right so under the provision for depreciation account you start with your opening depreciation balance you add the current year's depreciation something we're looking for you subtract the disposal depreciation and find the closing balance remember for your provision for depreciation account that's a contra asset it increases from the credit side decreases from the debit side now the figure that we're looking for is this that's the depreciation expense for the year that was entered into the income statement we need to add this figure back to our operating profit right another way how can we calculate depreciation sometimes assets might be available only at the net book value so we can draw a net book value account too so yeah the net book value account should look something like this in this account everything goes at the net book value so you can start with the opening net book value that's an asset on the debit side and that's your closing net book value any new asset acquired will be added to this account remember that's an asset account it increases from the debit side decreases from the credit side any disposal at the net book value will be subtracted it goes on the credit side and the figure that we're looking for or or we will be required to calculate to adjust our operating profit will be this income statement figure right that's the depreciation expense you guys should enter into your statement right so if you are required to calculate depreciation do calculate the depreciation expense first and then adjust your operating profit so yeah if we come back to the statement after adjusting depreciation profit and loss we can start off with the adjustments for working capital so the first working capital item that we should take a look at is inventory now inventory is a part of your income statement that is not accounted for because only cost of goods sold is recorded and the cost of goods sold is only for the units that have been sold but there are also unsold units kept in the warehouse for which the firm would have acquired and would require some cash payment so an increase in inventory would mean that the firm would have to go out and use its cash to buy that inventory so i can say whenever there's an increase in inventory that would lead to an outflow of cash whereas if there was a decrease in inventory the firm would have sold that inventory and that would lead to an inflow of cash so an increase in inventory would imply that the cash for the firm has decreased so you should subtract it from its operating profit and if the inventory would have decreased you will add it to the operating profit that the cash has increased again these are adjustments not uh, yet accounted for in the operating profit because the operating profit took only into account the cost of goods sold not these unsold units now similarly after inventory we need to adjust for receivables and payables so the next item that comes under your current asset after looking at inventory is your trade receivables and your prepaid figure we'll adjust that but the rule should stay the same whenever there's an increase in current asset that should lead to an outflow whenever there's a decrease in current asset it should lead to an inflow so let me explain the trade receivables adjust with an example so let's take a situation over here the income statement says your sales is 200000 now this figure implies that the sales earned not the sales received sales earned is 200000 trade receivables are 20000 at the start of the year and 30000 at the end now we need to find how much did our customers actually pay what was the cash inflow the money that went into our bank so if we can use the sales ledger control account something that we have learned earlier uh, we might be able to find the amount received from the customers for this year so let's take a look at that so yeah i've drawn the sales ledger control account you guys can take a look that's your opening trade receivables remember it used to come on the debit side your credit sales that's 200000 coming from the income statement and your closing receivables are 30000 now what this means is that if you calculate your bank figure it comes out to be 190000 now the income statement shows 200000 as your sale but the cash actually received the money that went into your bank account was 190 that's 10000 less from the sales figure 
Now, what is this 10,000? That 10,000 is actually the difference between opening receivables and your closing receivables. So using this, what we can say now is that whenever your trade receivables would increase, that would mean that your cash has decreased because the amount shown in the income statement as your sales is not the amount that you received and a lesser amount was received, which is why cash will go down. Similarly, if your trade receivables have decreased, that means that you receive more. So your cash should now actually increase, right? So the same logic is being applied over here. Any current asset, whether it's inventory, trade receivables, or even prepaid expense. So whenever there's an increase in a current asset, that would mean that cash has gone down. So you need to subtract it from operating profit. We saw that the case for inventory, we saw the case for trade receivables, and similar logic applies to prepaid as well. An increase in prepaid means that the business has overpaid an expense, and as a result, the cash has gone down for that business. Similarly, if there's a decrease in current asset, decrease in inventory, decrease in trade receivables, or decrease in prepaid, that would mean that your cash has increased, so it will be added to your operating profit figure. Therefore, a simple rule of thumb that we will use is that whenever there's an increase in current asset, that would imply cash reduces, so subtract that from operating profit, and whenever there's a decrease in current asset, that would mean cash increases, so add it to your operating profit. You guys should remember this rule for all current assets, inventory, receivables, and prepaid. Right, now after that, let's talk about trade payables. So let me introduce an example for trade payables just like I did that for trade receivables, and we'll see what will be the impact when payables increase versus when payables decrease. Yeah, so if you guys take a look at this example, the income statement says your purchases are 125,000. Now, in your statement of financial position, you guys can see trade payables that start to be 15,000 and ending payables to be 18,000. So there's an increase in trade payables if I compare opening and the closing. What impact should it have? Let's draw the purchase ledger control account. Over here, I can write down opening trade payables and my closing trade payables. I can write down the purchases. Now, if you guys calculate the bank figure, that comes out to be 122,000. Okay, now take a minute and think about this. If your purchases in the income statement are 125, but you only paid 122, which means you paid less, that means your cash balance should have increased. This time, an increase in trade payables is actually increasing your cash because a payable means that you haven't paid and that cash is still lying with you. So now our cash should increase. But if this trade payable figure had decreased, that would mean that you had paid some extra cash over and above this purchases figure and your cash balance should have decreased or your operating profit should have decreased. Right, so with current liabilities, an increase in current liability means that the cash stays with the firm. So the cash should increase, add it to your operating profit. But if your current liability decreases, then that's an outflow of cash and you should subtract it from your operating profit. So finally, coming back to a statement, after adjusting current assets, we now need to adjust our current liabilities. The rule that we have learned for current liabilities, it should apply to all current liabilities. If there's an increase in current liabilities, your cash should increase. If there's a decrease in current liability, your cash should decrease, right? That would mean you have paid the liability and that's an outflow. So you guys can see I've written this over here, add increase in trade payables, less decrease in trade payables. Similarly, add increase in accruals and decrease in accruals, right? So just follow the basic logic that we have learned up till now. And when you adjust this, you should be able to find the cash flow from operations. So this statement is called the indirect method where you start off from the operating profit you adjust non-cash expenses, you add depreciation and loss, subtract profits, then you adjust for working capital, so current assets. Increase in current assets, you guys can see, is subtracted. Decrease in current asset is being added. That's an inflow of cash. For current liabilities, we just saw increase in current liability means cash increases, whereas a decrease in current liability means your cash decreases. And this figure is the figure that we're looking for that's your cash flow from operations. 
Now you will be using this method to solve any question. So we'll make this change in our cash flow statement. So an update to our cash flow statement is to find the net cash flow from operations. You guys will use the indirect method that we just introduced, which is this figure cash flow from operations figure. From that, we have to subtract taxes paid and interest paid to arrive at net cash flow from operations. So once we have our net cash flow from operations after subtracting taxes and interest, this figure will be the first half of your cash flow statement. Investing activities will stay the same. Financing activity will stay the same as well. There's no change. And this gives you the net change in cash and cash equivalents. One more thing that we do add to our cash flow statement is we will also compare it to our opening balances. So once we arrive at this figure, we will add our opening cash and cash equivalent. This is the previous year's opening bank and cash balance. We will add that to find the closing cash and cash equivalent with this figure over here. Right now we'll use this figure when we'll solve a cash flow question. But for now, our cash flow statement format has few changes that we've just seen over here. Right. We've used the indirect method to find our net cash flow from operations. And once we arrive at the net change in cash, we will also add our opening balance and find the closing cash and cash equivalent.